Hello best learners, this is Mustafa here at Learn With The Best, and today we're going to be discussing Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power. Law number 43, Work On The Hearts And Minds Of Others. In this video, I'm going to define the law for you, and then we'll be looking at a juicy story from a couple of hundred years ago. And then we'll finish up by looking at an example from my very own past where I worked on the heart of a woman that I was working with. <laughs> Here's the law. Coercion creates a reaction that will eventually work against you. You must seduce others into wanting to move in your direction. A person you have seduced becomes your loyal pawn, and the way to seduce others is to operate on their individual psychologies and weaknesses. Soften up the resistance by working on their emotions, playing on what they hold dear and what they fear. Ignore the hearts and minds of others and they will grow to hate you. Once upon a time, near the end of Louis XV's horrible reign, France was desperate for change. Louis XVI would be the next king, and he was to marry Marie Antoinette, Princess of Austria. When she arrived to France in 1773, crowds swarmed around her, excited and hopeful for a new and better age for France. The people loved her, but she did not love them back. As soon as she became queen, she threw herself into a life of extreme luxury. She wore the most expensive gowns and jewelry. She threw magnificent parties, and she did all of this on credit. She didn't know or care about who was going to pay for all of her stuff. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. She actually designed and created a private garden of Eden. It was to look as natural as possible, with moss applied by hand to the trees and rocks. The queen hired milkmaids to milk the best looking cows in the realm. She had cheesemakers in special peasant outfits that she helped design. She even had shepherds to tend sheep with cute little ribbons around their necks. To pass the time, she would pick flowers in her little make-believe world, and she would watch her good little farmers doing their daily chores. This absolutely infuriated the court. Every time she wanted to add something new to her garden, the costs skyrocketed, while France itself was crumbling. She made no effort to mingle with the people of France, and no effort to make friends in the court. High-level officials would bring her reports on the deterioration of France, but she never read a single one of them. Years later, a thief tried to steal the most expensive diamond necklace in Europe, and he used her name as the purchaser. During the trial for said thief, the queen's extravagant lifestyle came to light for all of France to see. Everyone hated the queen. The people gave her the nickname Madame de Fessite, and when she would show up to her box at the opera, the audience would greet her with booing. Five years later, the French Revolution was beginning, but the queen gave it no mind. She thought the people would have their little rebellion be put in their place, and there was absolutely nothing to worry about. Well, it turned out that the people actually won the rebellion and forced the king and queen out of their palace and into prison. The following year, King Louis XVI was tried, found guilty, and beheaded. As the queen waited for the same fate, not a single person came to her defense. None of her former friends in the court, none of Europe's other monarchs, and not even her own brother, who was the king of Austria. The world hated this pampered queen. In October of 1793, the queen Marie Antoinette knelt at the guillotine and met her end.
Right from the beginning, Marie Antoinette had a dangerous attitude towards life. She grew up in royalty and extravagance, in a virtual bubble. She didn't know anything about real life, nothing about the average man, and she didn't even develop any social skills to mingle with people in the court. Unfortunately for Marie Antoinette, she had no skill when it came to working on the hearts and minds of others. People like this still exist today, of course, and now actually more than ever. There are mama's boys and daddy's little girls all over the world. Children that grow up with an overbearing parent that provides everything that their child could ever need or want. The child is not given the chance to go out into the real world and experience things for themselves. These people grow up believing that others should always come to satisfy their every need. They do not believe that they need to also meet the needs of others. In the game of power, these attitudes are very dangerous because at all times you must attend to those around you, learning and gauging their particular individual psychologies, tailoring your words to what you know will entice and seduce those around you. This requires art. Now, let's look at an example from my past where I used this law as a young man. But before we do that, I need your help with YouTube's algorithm. Please smash that thumbs up button below because if you don't, then YouTube is simply not going to show this video to anyone else and that would be a darn shame. Please also subscribe and click on the bell icon because if you don't, then again, YouTube won't let you know when a new video is uploaded. And if you want to transform yourself from a lamb to a lion, then check out my course pinned in the top comment below. Below. I will teach you the tools that you need for success, but you have to actually step up and put in the work on yourself. This course is not for everyone because the majority of the population are sheep. But for those very few of us who do want to walk the path of a lion, this is the course for you. Okay, so once upon a time, right after high school, I had a job as a cashier at a grocery store called Meyer. And, you know, Meyer is kind of like a super target where you have your huge department store and then it also has fresh foods and produce and it even has a small restaurant, kind of like a one-stop shopping store. So anyway, it's my first job right after high school and I'm going to be starting college sometime later. But during this time, I had a supervisor, a young girl in her early 20s, and she had such a poor attitude towards life, right? She was a cute, petite little blondie, and so she should have been getting tons and tons of attention. But just the way that she interacted with people was a huge turnoff. She was standoffish. She always had this mean look in her eye, like she was ready to go 12 rounds with Mike Tyson. And the really weird thing about her was that she always walked with a limp while having no physical injury. So, being the charming ladies man that I would like to think I am, I thought I would try and crack this nut. My goal was to simply make her smile. I made it a point to flirt with her every day. You know, I'd joke with her and of course none of my jokes were well received. But I continued anyway. I came up with pet names for her like Sunshine and a little miss rainbow but nothing worked she just wouldn't open up then one day like weeks later at the mini restaurant i'm getting my lunch and i get a scoop of superman ice cream she sees me and she starts talking about how her dad would always get her that exact same superman ice cream and how she misses him and so i'm like okay we're getting somewhere finally it took a long time but she's opening up to me and after that day she started smiling we talked more and more we would have our lunch together and eventually we formed a bond I particularly remember one day when she saw me enter the store, she completely lost her limp and she ran full sprint from one side of the store to the other, jumping into my arms. This girl basically transformed from being a mean little grouch into a fun-loving, bouncy little blonde. <laughs>
So working on the hearts and minds of others is truly an art. It's something that we kind of do already on a subconscious level. But now that you've seen this video and that you're actually aware of it and it's been brought into your conscious mind, it can really be that much more powerful. Okay, I think we should end the video here. If you like my YouTube content and you want to support me and the creation of even more content, then please check out my Patreon link pinned in the top comment below. I upload new videos every Friday for my Patreon subscribers that go deeper into my life regarding the 48 laws. These videos are a bit more raw and untamed than my usual videos here on YouTube. And if you're a patron of mine already, then I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because it's people like you that truly make all of this even possible in the first place. I hope you enjoyed this animated video on Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power, Law Number 43, Work on the Hearts and Minds of Others. And remember, you only retain about 10% of what you learned the first time around. So watch this video through a few times and then come back to it again and again in order to really understand and ingrain all of the material into your mind. Thanks, and I'll see you next time for Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power, Law Number 44. And if you made it all the way to the end, thank you for being my true fan.